Hi, I'm Jill from timeonourhands.com. Thanks for watching this video and welcome back to the Kitchen Island Build Project. In this video, we'll be finishing the Kitchen Island Build by adding a faux marble laminate accent wall to the front of the island and adding adjustable shelves and doors to the Kitchen Island cabinets. Let's get started. If you missed the first two videos in this series, I'll leave links in the upper left hand corner. To the first video where we demoed the old kitchen island and built new kitchen island cabinets. And the second video where we built a wood kitchen island countertop out of plywood. First I finished the front of my kitchen island with a faux marble laminate accent wall. I started by measuring the front of the island. The laminate will be attached to a piece of plywood for insulation on the wall. Next, I used my circular saw and Craig AccuCut to cut a piece of one quarter inch plywood using my measurements minus one quarter inch from the length and width to make sure that the finished laminate attached to plywood will fit through the space between the waterfall counter and floor and onto the front of the island. Once I wiped the plywood and laminate sheets down with a damp cloth to make sure there was no dust or debris on the surface, I followed the instructions on the can of contact cement and applied it to the laminate sheet and plywood using a foam roller. I used two coats applied 20 minutes apart. Once the contact cement was dry, I placed dowels on top of the laminate and placed the plywood on top. It's very important that you do not let the laminate and plywood that have glue applied touch until you have the laminate where you want it on the plywood. You will not be able to reposition the laminate on the plywood once the two glued sides have touched. Starting from the center, I removed the middle dowel and used a J roller to apply pressure attach, to attach the laminate sheet to the plywood. Then I worked my way down to the ends using the same technique to get the laminate stuck to the plywood. The next day I trimmed the laminate edges that were overhanging the plywood with a flush trim router bit, but I made a little bit of a mistake. Okay. Instead of trimming the laminate, the router cut right into the plywood as well because I had it set wrong. After I got the router bit set correctly, I went ahead and finished trimming the laminate. And then I dry fitted my laminate and plywood to see how it looked. Okay, so I kind of screwed this laminate up like I just showed you in the video just prior to this. Um, but, and it really bothers me when I do something like that, but I'm just telling myself that it's fine life is way too short to worry it's just a small blemish and honestly you cannot even see it like i can be way over at my bedroom like the only way you could ever see that i made a mistake is if you get down here <laughs> so and i was gonna do something with the edges anyways so i'll just have to decide if i want to do like a Maybe just a little piece of oak molding around here or not or whatever. So it's not perfect. Oh well. I still think it looks pretty damn cool for being a piece of laminate. And uh, yeah, let's just get this glued on there. 
To attach the laminate to my kitchen island, I used small wooden strips on the back of the cabinets and then I glued onto those to attach the laminate slash um, plywood. I do not recommend gluing the laminate slash plywood directly to the cabinets or a wall. Um, I had a bad experience once trying to remove a mirror that had been directly glued to a drywalled wall and I will never put myself or anyone else through that again. So, um, you know, just in case I want to remove it someday or somebody else does, they can pull it off because those nailed pieces of wood will come off um, and it won't destroy the entire back of the cabinet. So that's what I did next. Uh, first, I cut approximately two inch strips of one quarter inch plywood using my circular saw and Craig rip cut. And then I cut those strips down into pieces that I could attach to the edges of my cabinets where there's three quarter inch plywood to nail into. And then I attach the strips using small nails. Last, I applied Liquid Nails Paneling Adhesive to the wood strips and pressed the plywood laminate panel onto the front of my kitchen island. There wasn't any way I could use clamps or anything like that, so I pressed on it for a long time to make sure it was stuck. The Liquid Nails Paneling Adhesive worked okay. It's not like anyone will be dancing on the side of my kitchen island or anything but I, it didn't stick as well as I would have liked. So next time I'm probably gonna try using something different, something more of like an immediate um, adhesive. Once I was done with the front of the island, I started finishing the island cabinets. I moved all the stuff that had been in my old kitchen island into my new island. I thought I was going to make drawers and different storage solutions in my cabinets, but I decided to just make a couple of adjustable shelves for now and work on more organizing in the future if I want. First I built do doors for the cabinets. I have an in-depth video on how to build these simple modern cabinet doors that I'll link in the upper left hand corner, but I'll give a short overview of the steps here. First, I measured for my cabinet doors. These cabinets are frameless cabinets, so I measured the length and width of each cabinet front and subtracted one quarter inch from each measurement to give me the dimensions I need to cut my wood. Next, I used my Craig Jig Rip Cut Saw Guide and Circular Saw to cut 3 quarter inch red oak pure bond plywood to the width of the cabinet doors. After that, I used my Craig AccuCut and Circular Saw to cut that piece of wood to the lengths that I needed for the doors. I decided it made more sense to have two doors on each cabinet since they open in between the island and a run of cabinets, so I cut the pieces of plywood in two. After that, I applied edge banding onto the edges of the plywood to cover up the layers of wood and make it look like a solid piece of wood. After giving the doors a good sanding, especially the edges to remove any extra edge band that was left sticking out over the edges, I sealed the doors with three coats of polycrylic. Following the directions on the back of the 
can and sanding and dusting in between. I accidentally deleted the videos of me installing the hinges and doors onto my kitchen island cabinets and installing the door pulls, but I did it exactly the same way as last year when I made my new doors for the rest of my kitchen cabinets. I follow the directions on the package of concealed hinges that I used. First, using my Craig Concealed Hinge Jig, I drilled holes on the inside of my cabinet doors to mount the concealed hinges into. Next, I screwed my concealed hinges onto my cabinet doors. Then I installed the new cabinet doors onto my cabinets. After that, all that was left to do for the cabinet doors was install cabinet door poles. I used black finger edge cabinet door poles. I just lined them up where I wanted them on the cabinet and marked where the screws should go on the back of the cabinet door. Then I drilled pilot holes and screwed the handles onto the cabinet door. Last, I made a couple of adjustable shelves inside my kitchen island cabinets. First, I used a Craig shelf pin jig to drill two roll rows of vertical holes on the walls inside my cabinets. Next, I cut plywood the interior width and depth of the cabinet for shelves. Keep in mind that if you use bracket style shelf pins like the ones I use, you'll need to account for approximately 1 8 inch that they stick out into the cabinet. So you need to subtract 1 8 inch from the width measurement of the cabinet when cutting your shelving. I covered the exposed edge of the shelf with edge band and sanded and applied polycrylic just like I did with the cabinet doors. Then I just inserted shelf pins into the holes at the height I wanted my shelf to sit in the cabinet and slid the shelf on top of the pins. And who doesn't love a good before and after? Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give us a thumbs up down below. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll get back to you. Don't miss my next video where I'll be building a modern dining table out of plywood. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.